Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships and a replay of mine in the Halland. I was actually divisioned up in this one with Andy CX there, one of my Patreon supporters, one of my very long-standing Patreon supporters at this point. And uh, this is going to be a pretty decent game for us both. It's not going to be a super close game or anything, it was just a very fun game I had in the Halland. Now, uh, I've not put up a lot of videos in the last week-ish, I think it's been something like that, and I haven't streamed particularly recently either, so you might surmise from that I've not been feeling too great, and this, this is probably not going to be a particularly perky, high-energy commentary, and uh, certainly watching the news of current events has not really helped. I mean, I've been as gobsmacked as I think a lot of people watching what's been going on in the US, even if in some ways it's not surprising given who has been egging the whole thing on. And uh, in fact, even just today, he uh, uh, a, a certain DJT put out a, a statement actually condemning protesters, but you got the, uh, the well, protesters, <laughs> that's putting it very politely, the enraged mob that uh, stormed the, uh, the capital and beat a cop to death with a fire extinguisher and also bought pipe bombs and confederate flags but I'm sure they're reasonable people really um, yeah uh, he, he put out a statement condemning it and you strongly got the impression that he had been basically changed the podium and pretty much me to read out what was on the teleprompter because <laughs> it was very unlike his usual tone and very unlike what he was saying even just the day before so yeah there's clearly some adults still in the room but not many of them and uh, whether or not you want to classify them as adults at this point is uh, very debatable in of itself so, um, anyway, that's not why you're here, though. You're not here to be reminded of the <laughs> the uh, extreme volatility of things at the moment. I mean, we do have some good news going into the, the new year. Uh, we, we have got vaccines being rolled out in various places, and in a personal bit of good news, I now finally have a webcam, so the next time I do actually stream... I will be able to potentially have Sam right there on the stream with me if he cooperates. But there is a downside in that it's one that has a built-in microphone and I've actually had to, this, this is me sitting down to do this commentary now the second time over because I discovered that Sony Vegas does not have any way of differentiating microphone inputs when you're recording directly into Vegas. It just does not have a setting for that that I've been able to find. So if I have the uh, the webcam plugged in, it defaults to that, and the only way I can get it to actually record from my proper USB microphone, which is obviously better quality, is to just unplug the webcam entirely. So I'm going to have to be plugging that and unplugging that, and uh, it's a minor annoyance in the scheme of things, but it's still definitely an annoyance. But aside from that, just finally being able to get a hold of the webcam has been very nice. And it's actually my division mate here, Andy CX, who sent me a spare one of his. I despaired of finally getting a, a, a decent quality one, you know, just like buying one from Amazon or wherever, because everybody's still at home and lockdowns are still continuing and being re-implemented and becoming harsher and stricter in places. So... Uh, yeah, everyone still needs webcams for work, so uh, yeah, it's probably about the uh, the the least frustrating way to get one at the moment was to have somebody give a spare one of theirs. So uh, obviously, I was not expecting to run into the Shima. The Shima wasn't expecting to run into me. We are the respective uh, destroyers, only destroyers on our team, and so uh, that obviously came off worse for them, but I still lost a fair chunk of health in the process. But overall, I would count that encounter 
as a win. And aside from that initial buzz by planes, I haven't been too bothered by them because it's a tier 8 carry, even though this is a tier 10 game, so that's definitely in my favour. But there is also a mosque for, for me to be wary of, and that's why I was skirting around this cap here and not going into it, even though it was actually clear for me to do so, because it would have just been an invitation to be radared. So some nice extra top hits into the Kansas, and then a couple more, which is enough for the kill. And as you could tell from that pop-up, this is actually... Um, is it Swirsky or... I, I'm, I'm obviously horribly mispronouncing these, but uh, is it him or is it uh, the other fella? Griskrichkovitz, or however you pronounce it. That was definitely wrong. That has the torpedo reload skill. I can't remember, but it's one of those two. And you'll also get to see the AA skill kick in a bit later on as well, where you get a boost to your... Uh, is it your AA rate of fire or your, or your AA damage? I can't remember. But I've got now a slightly quicker reload, and honestly, it's a useful skill for a Torpedo Destroyer, but when your base reload is so quick to begin with, uh, it's less useful than it would be on a Japanese Destroyer with a longer reload, or a, you know an American Destroyer with a longer reload. So... It's nice, but it's not as nice as it would be on other destroyer lines. So this Republic has decided to push and they have actually just uh, helped take down uh, a Thunderer that was here, but uh, they're now deciding that they're not going to push any further than that because there's not that many enemy ships here. There's an Amalfi and an Anchorage alongside them and there's a Bismarck on the other side of the cap that's kind of heading away. Uh, so they're, they're clearly deciding now at this point discretion is the better part of Valor because as, as, as they were pelting HE at one Thunder, the other Thunder has been pelting HE at them so they're just burning the entire time. We'll see if they last too much longer. I don't think I'll get any tops into them myself just because they're headed away but I might get some luck with these cruisers and neither of them have radar so I have a relatively free chance of, uh, of uh, catching them by surprise because if they're paying attention they'll have noticed the Kansas being hit but there hasn't been any torpedoes in the water since then and so they're not necessarily expecting the drop against them. So we'll see if I get lucky with this Amalfi and uh, managed to land a few more hits and maybe get a second kill, which would be nice. Our carrier, for some reason, is right there and actually being spotted by the Amalfi, so they're taking a bit of fire. Not quite sure why they were that close, but anyway, I've taken that Amalfi out, so that's quite nice, and that's the Torpedo Talon activated again. And that now just leaves the Anchorage as the, oh hello Sam, as the closest ship. But they're now also heading away, so I don't think I'm going to get too many more chances to talk things. I mean, down south they have conclusively pushed through into the A cap and are now just pelting away at the few remaining ships on that flank. And there's not that much left on this flank either. I mean, we have fairly conclusively won this at this stage and especially them losing that Shima so early on that left them without even that kind of psychological factor of the enemy destroyer dropping torpedoes and doing area denial not that I think it would have made that much difference on this flank I was slightly worried by those torp bombers coming in by the way because the torp bombers are the uh, attack planes of choice when it comes to uh, dealing with destroyers, but as it was, uh, it turned out they were just dropping a fighter to try and help out that anchorage who's just smoked. But as they are firing from their smoke, I am now spotting them again because, of course, it's a heavy cruiser and it only gets the benefit of that smoke if there's nothing close enough to uh, spot it with the rather hefty debuff that those heavy cruiser guns have. So, if if I get lucky with my guns, because it's going to have to be guns, I don't think my torps are going to come back fast enough, I might even be able to sneak another kill here, but he is under fire by several things, so... Yeah, I, I, I may or may not get it, and he's also burning from our Thunderer as well. 
So I take a pot shot, but no, it's the Thunderer that actually um, gets the, the kill with um, that fire that was burning away. So there's not a lot left now, just three enemy ships, an enemy Thunderer, uh, whatever cruiser that is, and their carrier, and unfortunately the Thunderer just took out Andy, who'd managed to live until this point. But uh, it's not going to affect the outcome of the game at all. We have quite conclusively won. This was not a close game. It was just a fun game. And just the fact that I'm getting to finish it off by opening fire at this Parseval is uh, really the icing on the cake. So there we go. There's the AA skill kicking in. So now my AA gunners are much more effective, but there's not really a lot of time to take advantage. I could have tried to drop torps here as well, but I think... I think I made the right call in just pinging away because um, it's so close to, to winning this on points that I don't know if they would have got there in time and uh, whereas the, the gunfire is just, you know, that's guaranteed extra damage. Not enough to get the kill sadly, but uh, it was still within spitting distance of 200k. So two dev strikes, confederate, 186,000 damage done and 1946 base XP. So overall, a pretty nice match. And Andy there had a very solid middle of the team result as well. He did better than some, but maybe, you know, considering he was a tier 10 cruiser, he could have been a little further up, but uh, you know, I, I wasn't watching what was going on down there. I think he took some fairly heavy hits at some point, at, at which point in any cruiser, you have to play it a bit more cautiously, so. Maybe I'm being a bit unfair. I probably shouldn't have even, like, he's just sent me a webcam and he's one of my longest running patrons. So of course I'm going to throw in some criticism up there because that's just how I roll, apparently. Um, yeah, become a Patreon and I, I, I will criticize you too <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that, that's really selling myself there, isn't it? So, um, yeah, uh, I've had, I do have some more Patreon replays, but of my own replays, I don't have anything particularly recent. Uh, it was this and the Nelson, basically. I haven't been playing a lot of Warships since the start of the year. I've been getting Snowflakes and Tribs and Drabs, but because the Steel Snowflakes are all Tier 8, 9, and 10, those tiers are less fun for me, so I've been kind of limiting myself and just hitting my wall in terms of wanting to walk away from the game a lot sooner. Uh, especially playing the Heisen for some of the uh, the, the campaign requirements uh, over and over and um, getting repeatedly whacked by German AP bombs. That thing is not proof against German AP bombs at all. They hurt it significantly. So yeah, I've had some fairly frustrating games directly as a result of, of tier 10 carriers and uh, that alone is kind of limiting my desire to play the game. But like I say, I've got some Patreon replays lined up and I've also got one or two uh, other games I picked up around Christmas that I need to show off as well. So yeah, you can stay tuned for those also. So hopefully this video finds you well wherever you are and uh, that you have uh, enjoyed it of course. And if you have, you can do all the usual things down underneath it. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.